<laughs> first off, I just want to say, didn't think I'll be talking about Japan again in a video so soon. Uh, uh, hopefully I'm not uh, stepping into Joey the Anime Man or any other Japan news tubers turf, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Stay out of my territory. You remember Overwatch, the game that uh, love bombed you in the beginning of the relationship, but then a few years later decided to dip in the dead of the night, leaving you with some kids to feed and a mortgage to pay yeah it's um it's doing some serious numbers it's cleaning up its act and maybe not getting to where it used to be but it's starting to pick up a bit these numbers are pretty big now the question is where are these numbers coming from because the last time i saw overwatch they were struggling to just get 40k on twitch or maybe even less than that it was clearly less than valorant but now it's it's keeping up with just chatting what's where where is this coming from well the answer is there are yes tournaments happening that are picking up steam and getting the numbers up there but it's mostly japan and that is very odd because it, overwatch it was like here and there in japan but now it's actually uh, becoming trendy so what gives what what's going on well for two reasons first reason there's actually a, a pro scene happening there now and it streams like three times a week it's the overwatch championship series and japan has its own uh, version of it being streamed the second is popular japanese streamers actually streaming overwatch and that has gained a following there now people often say oh well who cares for screen replays it's not like their fan base is actually going to pick up the game yes yes they are if a vtuber that's pretending to be some sort of half piranha goat hybrid whatever her character is if they decide to stream a certain game you best believe the fandom is going to join in at the same time probably while they're streaming to get a certain parasocial connection going on it's gonna happen and that's what we're seeing here these uh, fandoms of these streamers are starting to pour in thus providing a renaissance for a game that was uh, dying out pretty badly with all the roadblocks they were bumping into. From what I've been researching so far, the streamer Tai Wan Yo is uh, pretty much patient, patient zero who started it all. They've been getting like famous Japanese streamers to play the game, uh, even hosting like local tournaments that get them involved. And as a result has started gaining interest amongst these guys. Now, why is this a big deal? Not just the streamers, but like an esports uh, environment. You see, with every game, whether it's Smash Brothers, Street Fighter, even heck, Catherine. Catherine has an eSports for God's sake. I didn't even know that until I looked it up. But it shows how dedicated a fan base is when they could take the game to not just a competitive environment, but to an environment that invites all, which is both competitive as well as... Uh, uh, I need to get my tongue checked. I swear to God, it is. We're done. When I say we're done. Casual audiences. That's what I'm saying. Competitive audience and casual audience. You want to balance both. You want to make sure they're both feeling involved. And that's what we're getting here. These tournaments that are being hosted for the Japanese audience, it's not always these most the most competitive players. It's casual people too playing it in these tournaments. And that's what makes them... Uh, appealed. Honestly, I think my tongue has been messed up because I ate that like spicy fried chicken a few minutes before recording, which not smart, but this is the only time I got. So yeah, uh, popular Japanese tournaments being streamed of Overwatch as well as popular Japanese streamers are kickstarting a trend of Overwatch in Japan. It also helps that Blizzard has added three Japanese heroes to the game. Although I do need to ask, has a Blizzard employee ever come face to face with an actual Japanese person? Because do they just think all Japanese people wall climb everywhere they go? Like each one of these heroes, they climb walls. It just makes me think that they assume that Japan, if they go to Japan, everyone's just Spider-Manning their way to work or school or something like that. Regardless, this is a good thing. Now Overwatch, needs this it it genuinely needs this because uh if you remember a little thing called overwatch league this was an esports 
uh, created straight by Blizzard themselves. Uh, uh, these tournaments that you're seeing now, these Overwatch Championship tournaments, yeah, Blizzard is here and there with them, but these are more locally you know established and that is a good thing that is a an amazing thing to happen to any game is having organic locally based tournaments that start popping up and start building a competitive environment in a uh, in a natural manner overwatch league the problem was that they were trying to jump start something artificially it's sort of like dubai's man-made islands or wherever those are it just did not seem like a stable plan. It felt very shaky and ultimately it collapsed. It, it's gone. Overwatch League is gone. Uh, but even when it was still going on, they had ch Chinese uh, Overwatch based teams as well as South Korean based Overwatch teams. No Japanese teams. Uh, I remember seeing that. I was always wondering like, why is Overwatch not popular in Japan as much as it is in like China and South Korea? But now that we, uh, the Overwatch League has ended, we're starting to see the good side of what's happening, that everything is growing back to where it needs to be. Because before Overwatch League, th there was already local tournaments and local like established uh, competitive scenes happening, which really were helping with the game. It, it bothers me because Overwatch 1 was the best gaming experience in history, I would say. I know that's a very bold claim to say, considering what Overwatch 2 has been and all the sadness that comes with that. But Overwatch 1 was a genuine great experience when it first came out. Like, I'm talking before the Brig era, um, Brig being a character that single-handedly, I think pretty much killed half of the Overwatch population. Uh, that character alone, when it, she released. Oof. And plus, also with the recent news about the Overwatch 2 PvE just entirely scrapped. Uh, to be honest, I mostly play Overwatch for the PvP. Uh, but at the same time, the PvE being a big promise is what kind of gets me. Like, what was the point of Overwatch 2, man? There really was no reason to leave Overwatch 1 in a drought for three years or so. It, it, and that's what bothers me. That's what I'm trying to get to. And my point is, don't squander this chance. You, Blizzard now has a chance to make amends. Yes, PvE is not happening, but you're seeing Overwatch starting to get back up in numbers. Try and fix the balancing. Try and get the matchmaking not be so stomp or be stomped which it still technically does but thankfully so far i haven't had it so much i've been climbing decently uh, it's been a while I, I can't really play competitively in this environment because i'm not at my actual room just visiting here so but it's been fun so far. Uh, the changes, they, they, they've definitely been doing more changes. That's nice. They're listening to feedback. That's also nice. And now they're focusing more on PvP. That's what they're saying. So hopefully, with the PvP being focused on, they also focus on a way to get this lore that they've supposedly shelved from the PvE to some other medium. Maybe a, a show, a comic book, something. Because... People genuinely like this world and the characters within it. It, it, it. It's a real shame that they didn't take the opportunity when Overwatch 1 was at its peak. They should have just kept hitting the stride over there instead of just pausing that and then doing all this with PvE. But this is a second chance. This is a second win. You, you see it getting big in Japan. Take that. Work with that. Build off of that. If they don't, I'm afraid it'll go back down to where it is. Japan is carrying this uh, viewership here. So maybe capitalize on that as fast as po possible. I don't know. Do a cup of noodles collaboration with Overwatch or something. You, you already did it with the Porsche for some reason. The strangest things get popular in Japan from Western culture. Like Tommy Lee Jones is for some reason really big in Japan. And I guess many different celebrities that pop up there i remember like uh ronaldo going up there 
and they thought he was Brazilian, so they just played him like some sort of uh, Rio de Janeiro kind of concert, and he's just standing there like, um, not Brazilian. <laughs> I'm not Brazilian, but hey, uh, their their heart was in the right place. So bless them for that. But here we see that Japan is giving Overwatch a chance. I think Blizzard should listen and start to pick up steam on that that they got something going on here you know that keep on working on the balance patches get a better game going but yeah i know so far overwatch doesn't have the best reputation but i'm willing to throw a bone wherever i see it and i'm seeing that the de developers are putting their best foot forward they are being more communicative with their community and they're trying to see what works what doesn't work they quickly try to adapt to that and get that out of the way hopefully the, the, there's a bright future for overwatch 2 um i still kind of feel like they should drop the two and just go straight to overwatch because there's no difference now since there's no pve but hey We'll see where they go from here. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic for Overwatch. I'm still in a hell divers phase, but Overwatch, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But yeah, that's all there is.